They are the collection of warrior souls. They are many. You are but one. This is Ermac. The origins of this mysterious fighter of Outworld are a bit of an enigma. With reports of a red clad ninja, similar to the likes of Scorpion and Sub Zero, appearing in the first tournament. However, these reports were confirmed to be nothing more than an error. Later, however, during the Earthworm invasion, Outworld forces created a warrior in red, whose sole purpose was to serve the realm and their emperor. Their name was Ermac, and they immediately proved to be a troublesome opponent for Earthrealm fighters due to their undead state and a mastery of telekinesis. It also helped that Ermac is not just one being, for they are a construct, housing a collective of thousands upon thousands of fallen warriors, granting Ermac all their fighting skills, knowledge, and strength. For many years, Ermac remained a pawn of Shao Kahn until they were freed from the Emperor's control by the swordsman Kenshi. This led to Ermac joining the forces of good against the threat of Onaga, a dragon king. Sadly, this change of morality was short-lived, as they were merely one of many to perish during Armageddon. In Lord Raiden's alternate timeline, Ermac's fate was vastly different. Not only were they the one who took Jackson Briggs' arms, but after the fall of Shao Kahn, Ermac remained a loyal defender of Outworld, but they gained free will to follow the Khan of their choosing. When General Kotal rose to take the throne of Outworld by force from Melina, Ermac sided with Kotal, Reptile, and Devorah, thus leading to a successful coup and the ascension of Kotal Khan. It is speculated that Ermac's free will was the result of an oversight in their creation. In this timeline, one of Ermac's souls was that of the wise Adenian king named Jared. His powerful spirit could have been what led to Ermac breaking free of anyone's control. Ermac was never seen again after the death of Shinnok, not even during the temporal crisis designed by Kronika. Perhaps Ermac's independence led to the undead warrior finding peace, and they went on to live happily somewhere in Outworld. Nobody truly knows. It would seem that events are destined to always happen, no matter the timeline. Even when Liu Kang restarted history as the Keeper of Time, a new deadly alliance of Shang Tsung and Quan Chi rose to power thanks to mysterious forces that rivaled Liu Kang thus leading to conflict and conspiracy between Earthrealm and Outworld. The necromancer Quan Chi created Ermac in this timeline as another source of defense against Liu Kang's champions of Earthrealm, including one of Quan Chi's demon slaves turned hero, Ashra. She, combined with Kenshi, proved to be the perfect antithesis for the Legion of Souls. As in the previous timeline, Ermac was created with the soul of King Jared. From the moment of Ermac's first defeat, Jared showed signs of control over the body, something that he would accomplish upon reuniting with his daughter, Melina. Her defeat of Ermac would allow Jared to fully take control, and thus, Ermac would become a force for good. This also allowed him to reunite with his beloved Empress Sindel and his other daughter, Kitana, bringing together a family that had been broken ever since Jared was murdered. On that note, Jared hinted that his murder was more complicated than what was believed, but that was a story for another time, as the deadly alliance needed to be stopped. Shang Tsung and Quan Chi's benefactor was revealed to be the Titan Shang Tsung from another timeline, a malevolent keeper of time that sought to destroy all other timelines with his army of corrupted fighters and the army of the Dragon King. One of these dark warriors was an evil incarnation of Sindel, who fought the honorable Sindel of Liu Kang's timeline. Unfortunately, the kind and powerful Empress was mortally wounded in the battle, much to the dismay of Jared and her twin daughters. However, using the power of Ermac's body, Jared was able to add Sindel's soul to their collective. Ermac would go on to assist in stopping Titan Shang Tsung and his attempt to create a new Armageddon event. After that, they became a loyal servant to the new Empress, Melina. Jared and Kitana became her advisors, 
as well as no moral compass during what would become a difficult reign for Outworld. Sadly, this position would not last, as the Ermac Collective would regain control of their body from Jared, as well as discover that without Conchi's magic, they would degrade and die. So, Ermac freed the Necromancer from the Outworld prison, but like always, Quan Chi only cared for himself, and attempted to make Ermac his slave once more upon regeneration. With the power out of all their connected souls, including that of Emperor Sindel, Ermac was able to defy their old master. Now Ermac is able to shape their destiny, however they see fit. Over the years and multiple timelines, Ermac has seen many changes. At first, they appear to be nothing more than a duplicate of the likes of the Lin Kuei or the Shiran Ryu, but with a red palette. As time passed, Ermac has taken on more undead appearances, from a mummified corpse to a ghostly vampire of souls. What has remained the same are their abilities. Their soul magic grants them powerful telekinetic abilities, which they use to the utmost degree in battle, brutalizing their opponents and creating some of the most imaginative fatalities in all timelines. Also, their Mac does not identify as a single being. It's as if every soul and their body has fused together to create a shared consciousness, which is why they always refer to themselves as we. Even powerful telepaths such as Takeda Takahashi do not dare to enter their mind, for it is too overwhelming. It raises the question as to how chaotic their mind truly is. This is why Ermac will forever remain one of the most unique warriors in all the realms. The realms have no shortage of stories that need to be told, and they are all within my archives. I will return to tell more. Until then, I bid you all farewell.